Welcome to week two of our Open SAP course Build Mobile Applications with SAP Cloud Platform Mobile Services. In the last week, I provided an overview and outlook about this course and gave a general overview about mobile development with SAP Cloud Platform. In this week, I will focus on the mobile backend and will start in this unit with an introduction to the tools. So, we have discussed the general architecture of mobile solutions. You have mobile services usually in the middle of this universe. In this, in this situation, it's SAP Cloud Platform. You have the applications on top and you connect to various backend systems. During our course, we will use our own backend system that runs directly on SAP Cloud Platform. And we will create this backend using the mobile backend tools, which comes as part of the mobile services. The mobile backend tools are really a great tool to build your backend if you are starting your mobile solution from scratch, meaning you don't have any backend yet. So this is the very first use case you would use those tool set for. But there are other use cases you can use it. So for instance, you can use it as a staging area where you copy data from your business systems into the backend system onto Cloud Platform and serve it from there so that the end user will not directly tap into the backend system. This will offload your backend system and the traffic will not go directly to it. This is often used in B2C scenarios. Also for small integration projects where you want to take a little bit data from there, a little bit data from there, and at the end all your mobile data comes from that single source of truth, but your service, your backend service that you create with the mobile backend tools is actually the integration part. And mobile backend tools comes with a lot of additional features. And you can also use it for mock services to decouple the front-end developers and the back-end developers. So basically it, it creates an, an uh, interface where the front-end developers can rely on and the back-end developers can implement this interface in a different technology. And so that the front-end developers can already start working, uh, they can rely on the mock service here. So the mobile back-end tools is basically a very convenient way to build your mobile back-end. Um, it's recommended and really uh, valuable for using offline scenarios because the OData service that backend tools will generate for you are fully OData compliant as well as they support special OData features that we can leverage during offline synchronization. The service though is not limited to mobile use cases. You can also use them for multi-channel applications if you want. And actually by using the mobile backend tools you greatly reduce the overall cost of development of your solution since we have seen, and that's why we have the iceberg on the right-hand side here, that below the water there's usually the back-end development, which takes a lot of resources and time during app development. And at the end, you get a customizable, fully compliant OData service at ease with low-code tooling. There are even more features that I want to point out here. So first, there's this CSDL. The CSDL is a description language of OData services. So basically something that describes the service itself. And with that, uh, we can generate the service. So it's basically building a model-driven development approach here. And it also provides and includes all the security features that you need in your application. So in order to secure your backend and have user authentication on top of it, you just declare you want this authentication theme or this, and then you are ready to go. The service that will be generated is very extensible. So it's flexible in the way that you can implement your own backend logic into it without interfering with your model. So you can regenerate as often as you want, you can change it, you can extend it, and then you will not overwrite your already existing extensions to the service. And to make it really easy to use, we have a graphical editor included. So you build basically your model, generate the OData service on top of it, 
and then you're ready to go to start with your app development. For, particularly for OData offline synchronization, the OData backend tools generate a service that supports the needed OData specifications for using uh, fully, fully using the offline synchronization. So we will later discuss that in more detail, but offline synchronization requires some special OData features. So namely here, it's repeatable requests, which is not necessarily OData, but uh, usually uh, it's an HTTP thing that we need to uh, look at. And obviously delta information. And with delta information, um, I mean, mean that, that uh, if you do a request, Right. and you want to copy that data to the device in an offline fashion, then you, and you do the request again, you don't want to get the same data. You want to reduce the data that comes to your device as much as possible. And therefore you need a Delta enabled service. And that means that during that second request, your service will respond with, oh, I have no data, everything is the same. This will greatly enhance the sync times for offline use cases. And uh, for the developers, it's always important to, to uh, have a mock service and a test service. So you can give initial data and test data along with your service so that it will not st start from scratch, but it will al already have data in it. And most importantly, the service will take care of the OData table structures. So the OData service eventually, at the very end, persists its data in the database. And having that in the database, it means that table changes, structural changes, will result in changes in the service and vice versa. And the service makes sure that the database structure is already always in place and like adding a new property will not break things. The databases that are supported at the moment are SAP HANA DB, uh, Adaptive Server Enterprise and Postgres. And for testing and mock services, you can also use a small in-memory database, which is uh, just purely a memory database. It has nothing to do with HANA in that case. It's just running in, in the RAM. So how does it look like from an architecture perspective? Here you, you see the mobile services again and the mobile services connects to your backend. In this case, the backend is a generated Java service coming from the mobile backend tools. The Java service itself connects to either one of the databases or to the um, in-memory database and retrieves the data from the database, converts it to OData and gives it back to the mobile services, where it then can be consumed by the mobile devices. That's it. So easy it, it can be. Uh, interesting fact here is that your Java service can be generated for either the Neo environment or the Cloud Foundry environment of an SAP Cloud Platform. And once it's deployed there, which is also uh, a feature that you can directly deploy it from within the web IDE, once it's deployed in the Cloud Platform, it's a regular Java application that you would handle like any other uh, Java application uh, as usual. So we have seen the architecture, but how do I build it? So what is the process of building it? You basically start with a project in the Web IDE, and in that project you build your model, meaning you use the graphical editor to create a service model, which looks quite similar to a traditional entity relationship modeling. So you have your entities and you connect them with relations uh, in OData, they're called navigational links, but nevertheless, once you're done with it, this is how it could look like, you press a button and generate the service. By generating the service, you will send the model to a generator. The generator will return a fully completed Java project to you. Then you have the option to modify the behavior of the service, but it's already fully implemented and supports complete CRUD operation on your model. Also other features like filter, 
uh, select and, and other OData features are supported already. So service is ready to go. With a Java project, what would you do? Obviously, obviously you compile it. Once it's compiled, you get either a WAR file or an MTAR, multi-target archive, that you can directly deploy to run and host the service. In this case, we can deploy it to Cloud Foundry as a standard Java application. And that's it. In the demo now, I will show you how this works. And uh, I think we can just directly get started. Here I'm in the Web IDE, in the full stack edition of the Web IDE on the Neo environment. What I've done prior to this demo is that I have created and activated the extension in the Web IDE, which is called Mobile Services App Development Tools. By having that, you activate the mobile development tools, and this includes the mobile backend tools. I already have a canteen service here, and as I mentioned before, we will have this canteen use case as an ongoing use case throughout the course. Here we do have the backend for the canteen service, and it's here in the CSDL. This is the CSDL view. You can zoom in and zoom out, and it basically reflects our model. On the right-hand side, you see a canteen. Let me open that up a little bit. With the properties in the canteen, we have menus, which are served. And the menu has also properties. And menus can be booked by the employees. So if you eat in the canteen, you book a menu, and you're done. So booking is basically the transactional uh, booking of a menu and menu and canteen are the, the standard data. What you can do here now is you can modify and change your model. For instance, we can add a new property to the menu and you saw that I selected the menu, press plus and I can add the property. Another option would be to right click Sorry, right click and add the property here. Same thing. Let's add sites. To the menu as well as a soup. String 100. You see it's traditional stuff. Nullable, obviously we can also change it. Maybe we don't have sites today, so we want to have it let's say, nullable. I save that. And a right click on the model, let me generate the OData service. Let me open the console. And at the bottom, you see that the service, well, it's already done, has been generated successfully. With the service now, I have a complete Java project here within the Web IDE. And with a right click, I can just build it, which compiles the Java project. Once I've done that, I can just right click the mtar file and deploy it to the cloud platform. Build has already been completed and I already connected my web IDE to the cloud platform account. That's why everything's pre-listed here. I just can deploy it. This will take your mtar file to cloud, your Foundry, cloud foundry dev space and implements it or deploys it there as a standard application. Let's check the cloud platform cockpit. So here I'm in my dev space and the canteen service is already here. It's still stopped, but once the web IDE deployment process 
is completed, it will start automatically. Once it's there, we can open up the Canteen service and look at the service itself and use it already. Let's take a look at the usual thing. Here I do see the application root, which is basically the URL where the service is available. And you would take that URL later into mobile services to connect mobile services to that backend service. You can change also the properties. And you see here now that it's starting the service. And once it's started, we can just click on this application route. Here we go. And there's our service. And I want to show you that it's actually working. So let's see for the canteen set and see what data we have. And here we are. This is test data for the canteen set. Just make sure that this is And also request it in JSON format and we get the canteens in JSON format. This concludes the first unit of week two. In the next unit we will get started with OData itself. Thanks for listening and see you there.